Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Oh, what a weekend. Mm, I'm exhausted. You have to go into the office this morning. I do. Oh, that's too bad. I thought we might go back to breakfast after bed. You mean vice versa? Oh, so I do. I must be just as exhausted as you are. Darling, why don't you get back in bed now? Oh, I've gotten myself all dressed to be such a weight. You are an old skin flint, you know it. I know it. Besides, I can't let the Killians go without saying goodbye. Wouldn't be very hostessy of me. No, well, I'll say goodbye for you. Mm, that's not the same thing, Dolly. Saying goodbye to your guest doesn't make you a good hostess. Personally, I think you fulfilled your duties to the brim. Thank you, sir. Now button me up the back, please. Buttoning you up the back seems to be one of my main duties as your husband. You mind? Is it that difficult? <laughs> it's a pleasure to fulfill it, Mrs. Norton. Now, while I've got you here, clenched in my powerful hands... Yes! Let me tell you that you are a very fine hostess. Oh, is that all? You are the finest of the fine. Having Roger and Lelia and their son was... The young son was... It wasn't easy with one maid. And Mama. Don't forget Mama. Mm, still, you were superb. Oh, it was easy. I liked the Killians. Besides, I asked for it. You certainly did that. Oh, don't think I wasn't scared after I invited Roger for the weekend. Especially since I didn't tell him his wife was here. Mm. Only a nincompoop or a wise man would have dared do it. Which am I? I reserve judgment. <laughs> I want to see the results. There. Your buttons are all buttoned. Thanks. David. What? I'm not a little Miss Fixit, am I? <laughs> you scared me so. Well, you've been trying to fix up the Killians, haven't you? Well, that was different. They need fixing. Mm, that makes it different. Well, what I mean is you don't think I go around sticking my nose into other people's business where it doesn't belong, do you? Well... Don't say it, don't say it. I hate being a busybody, and I know you'd hate being married to one. I certainly would. But please tell me I'm not one. You're not one. One what? Oh, you. <laughs> Darling, I think that what you've been trying to do for the Killians has been swell. I... I, I think if it works out, Jeffrey's going to be a very happy boy. Poor kid. He was so alone, so lost. Till you understood him. Oh. The only thing that matters with Jeffrey is that he never really had a home. Do you think Roger and Lila will give him one now? What do you think they decided over the weekend? It was impossible to tell from watching them. They're so distant. I don't know. I won't ask them either. Not even one question. That'll be a strain. I bet you think I can't do it. I'm willing to be surprised. David, do you, I mean, <clears throat> are you hopeful for them? Asking you questions isn't part of the bet. Well, frankly, I don't think that at rock bottom, either Roger or Leela were meant for each other. If they hadn't had a son, it wouldn't have mattered so much, but unfortunately it did. It must be awful not to be meant to be married at rock bottom, I mean. So lonesome. Probably even lonesomer than not being married at all. We're meant, though, aren't we, darling? We certainly are. At the rockiest rock bottom? Mm, the rockiest. We've got a pure, solid stone foundation. Oh, David, I love you. You do? Yes. Mm. You know, seeing Roger and Lita together all weekend, married and still so far apart, it just made me love you much more. Me too. Darling. Mm hmm I have to make a train, remember? Oh, you and your trains. Those trains are always interfering with our privacy. That is the happy lot of the commuter. And his missus. Mm. So, missus, if you will kindly unwrap yourself for me. You are unwrapped. I'll re-wrap myself into my coat and we shall go down to breakfast. I hope Mama has the sense to sleep late. I made her promise to last night. You're the only one who has any influence. Oh, I'm a very influential guy. The main reason I married you, you influenced me. Anybody? Not a peep. Not a mama or a Killian in sight. It's hard to believe. Gertrude must be here because, hey, look, the table's set. Well, I don't see any reason why we shouldn't sit down and commence eating, do you? None at all. Commence. Uh oh, prunes again. That's life. You have to take the bad with the good. Prunes is bad. He is. What he is? Oh, prunes. Good morning, Roger. Good morning, both. I've been outside romping with your dog. It's a beautiful morning, and I am very rested. Where's Leela and Jeffrey? They'll be down. Uh, now, what about prunes? Eat them. With pleasure. 
Now there's a man after my own heart. Where are you going? Into the kitchen, see what else there is for breakfast. You're not fooling me. You're running away from four harmless little prunes. <laughs> Who says they're harmless? <laughs> <laughs> That's my line. Are you always like this, you two? Like what, Roger? Do you wake up feeling good every morning? Uh, nobody does. I think you do. I wish I were 20 years younger. You wouldn't appreciate it. Mm, that's true. The pity is that one doesn't get born old and progress through life towards childhood to die in the cradle. This is fine talk. I mean it. It's a much better plan. I'll speak to the authorities about it. Though, actually, children are the wisest. Hmm, perhaps. Then in my case, life has uneducated me. It's gotten more complicated and distressing, and I have gotten more stupid with it yearly. Say, I thought you felt rested this morning. I do. And so I see everything very clearly. It's because of Claudia, too. She's remained wise, David. Wise as a guiltless child. I think she's a pretty fine person, too. Perhaps you could tell her for me. False pride, probably, that I can't do it myself. Tell her, thank you. Thank her for what? Well, it sounds so foolish in words, but... Leela and I have decided to stop living our independent lives and to try and create a home for Jeffrey. He's got a whole life ahead of him. We can give him a few years of the rest of ours. Claudia would tell you that you're not giving those years away, Roger. They're going to be yours. We'll see. At any rate, it's settled. That's David, what we hope. What's going on? You haven't eaten one prune, either of you. Oh, what careless oversight. Here I go. <clears throat> How delicious. <laughs> I brought in the bacon and eggs. What's the matter with Gertrude? She's busy popping the popovers. How many places did you want her to be in at one time? You shouldn't be carrying heavy things. Oh, what's heavy about a few eggs? Two for you, for Roger, one for me. Why only one for you? Because I'm a girl. A girl who is about to become a mother should not eat like a plain girl. You mind your own business. You hear how she talks to me, Roger? Oh, I pity, pity, pity you. Besides, mm. I take my orders from Dr. Rowland, not from you. I'm only your husband, of course. That's all? That's Whatever all. Claudia says, I'm on her side. Huh. Hmm. Oh, I'm sorry I'm late for breakfast. You're not late, Leela. We're early. Tack personified. I just want some coffee. I won't even try to coax you to more, Leela. Say... You're a very special person around here, Leela. Roger and I don't get coaxed. We get forced. Bodily. You've got to be forced, you men. There's such prejudice here against my sex. I think I'll go and get in the car and take it out of the garage. But the popovers! Let them pop. We must stand together, David. Together. Let them pop, Claudia. I'm going up to back. Oh, I hate you both. Be down in a minute. We've got only a half hour till train time, Roger. I'll be with you, and I think my son is going to need some pudding. The same thing every morning. Rush, 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 rush. But it seems to agree with you and David. I wouldn't want it any other way. Except for the rushing. <laughs> Even that's all right. When it's the two of you in the same direction. You sure you won't have anything but coffee? Oh, oh, don't say it. I forgot. No coaxing. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> all right. I'll have a piece of toast. My, that was easy. You know, I really hate to go back into town this morning. I don't blame you. I'd hate it myself. Maybe if Roger and I had started out like this... On a farm of our own. Didn't you know? It was Roger's idea that we should. Well, I'm glad somebody's benefited from our mistakes. Though I dare say you'd have managed pretty well without advice. Advice from a friend like Roger is very good to have. I'm glad we took it. I envy you, Claudia. You've kept your life so simple. Well, maybe it's just because I'm too much of a coward about life to let it get complicated. That's not cowardice. That's sense. Besides, David wouldn't let me. You're a funny child. Only I'm not a child. You're not a child, in some ways. And because of those ways, it looks as if I'm going to spend a summer dabbling in marriage instead of in politics. Marriage can't be dabbled in, Leela. Well, I, I didn't mean it the way it sounded. I think it's a lot more complicated than politics. Lots more fun, too. And the rewards are much, much deeper. Maybe they are. I'll try to find out. I'm so glad you've decided. <laughs> you decided for me. I did. When you sheltered my son and brought my husband up here. If I were you and you were me, I think I'd hate me for butting in. I'm just as surprised as you are that I don't. At any rate, we're trying to give it a try. Well, the car's purring happily in the driveway. <laughs> Where are all the Killian? The men are still upstairs. 
I'll go see what's keeping them. Roger and Jeffrey probably swapping tall tales about trout fishing. <laughs> Those two are so much alike. If I don't watch my step, I'll be left out. Mm-hmm. Well, did you uh, find out what you wanted to know? That why you left us alone. I could have killed you. <laughs> now, take the murder out of your eye and tell me everything. Nosy. I'll have you know I didn't ask one question. My, oh, my, oh, my, oh, my. Congratulations. Well, I should think you would congratulate me. David, I am embarrassed. I am a Miss Fix-It. Mm -hmm. Congratulations even more. Darling, it's worthwhile because Leela and Roger are going to try and make it go again. It's exciting, isn't it? I hope so. Even if it's not forever, it's for Jeffrey. That's better than nothing. Mm -hmm. That's, uh... Remark to go down in the books. It's a very unfathomable remark. Well, I'm a very unfathomable girl. That you are. You admit it. Mm -hmm. Good for you. Oh, yes, uh, Roger said to uh, tell you thank you. What for, for heaven's sake? For everything. For the weekend, for Leela, for Then you, you knew, too, all the time that they decided to get together, and you never told me you were I didn't dope. ask one question, not one single question. As a matter of fact, Roger just walked right up to me and told me. Oh, it's not fair. I never can know anything that you don't know. <laughs> Makes me furious. Little Miss fix -It. Don't you dare call me that. Why not? You you called yourself that just a half hour ago. I heard you say it, just as plain as you could speak. David, am I a little Miss fix -It? Well, you said I wasn't. Mm -hmm. Anyway, it's one thing for me to call myself something, and it's quite another thing for you to call myself something. Then it's all right if I call you darling. Oh, David, if you call me darling, it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Dum, dum, da, dum, dum. La, 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 la. When you're downtown and stop at a fountain or tea room at noon... I'm sure you often join the men and girls who regularly order ice-cold Coca-Cola with their luncheon sandwich or salad. Why not have Coke when you lunch at home? It's so simple, and Coke goes good with any food. Even leftovers taste better when they're accompanied by delicious Coca-Cola. And the afternoon duties are somehow more easily accomplished when you lunch refreshed. Hi there, Joe. Ah, uh, David, uh... I'll be you. I'd be fine, though, a little ragged around the mm. around the edges. I should think you would be, David. It must have been quite a weekend. Oh, it was. But who cares? It all turned out fine. And that's what was really important. But now the most important thing is for you to see that Claudia takes it easy again. Well, she's made up her mind to it, and I sort of hope that nothing comes up to change it. Well, I think it's not going to be as simple as it sounds. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? Well, I have an idea that Claudia is going to try to wangle another trip into New York tomorrow. A trip into New York? Oh, no. All because of an innocent little cable, and you'd better be alert to it, David. I will be. See you tomorrow, Joe. All right. Bye, David. As I was about to say, every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. And now here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. <laughs> 